Hey, I'm Reinhard Kate, and welcome to episode 28 of The Ripple Drop. We've got software engineer Mayuka Vidari, who's going to talk everything interoperability with us today. Stay tuned for the drop. Why is interoperability in blockchain important? And is there any blockchain that's suitable for all projects? Interoperability in blockchain is important because it, there's kind of, you can't really have one blockchain that's suitable for everything. In any development project, you have trade-offs between what you can optimize and what you can prioritize. You can't have it all. For example, uh, Ethereum is great for the EVM, the Ethereum virtual machine and Solidity smart contracts, and you can kind of do whatever you want. But there is a little bit of a trade-off that comes there because all of these smart contracts have to be processed. Your throughput's limited a little more versus the XRP ledger is great for payments. But because of the way it's designed, having this kind of open, do whatever you want functionality is a little harder to do. But, you know, what it's good at, it's really good at. So you've got these trade-offs. And so the objective of interoperability is how do we have it all? How can we use our value in all these different ways without needing to have these siloed ecosystems? Without interoperability, all of these different blockchains will be siloed ecosystems. And so you can't really tr move your value around very easily. But with interoperability, you can move that value around. You could, you know, store some of it in a brand new experimental DeFi protocol on Ethereum. You can move it to something similar to the XRP ledger that's more designed for payments. And then you can have not have to worry about your gas fees and everything and send a bunch of payments out. What's the current state of the industry with interoperability? Is it tribal? So crypto in and of itself can be tribal. A lot of people are very attached to the chains that they support and are less open to looking at and working with other chains. But that's not everyone. There are a lot of crypto projects that are working very hard on interoperability. Some of them are quote unquote layer zero projects where they're kind of designed to be an underlying uh, connector blockchain that connects all of these layer one protocols. So other projects are working on bridges. Basically, you know, how do you transfer your value from one layer one to another? You can build a bridge between them and just transfer your value to and from them. So how do those bridges work? How do you, how specifically can you transfer your value from say Ethereum to uh, the XRP ledger? Most of them, what they do is they'll have, you can lock your value on one side and then they will mint some sort of wrapped token on the other side. So for example, if you're trying to transfer your Ethereum to the XRP ledger, what you might do is you would lock it in a smart contract on Ethereum and then so you'll have some way of proving on the XRP ledger that you've locked that money there or you'll have some centralized party that does the, the moving of the funds for you. And then on the XRP ledger, you can claim the funds that you locked. So how do blockchains currently bridge with one another? And is there any friction with existing methods? The, the friction that exists, a lot of it is, I mean, you still have to deal with these high gas fees. The bridges that are less centralized and uh, a little more trust minimized, sometimes they have to do a lot of computation in order to prove that you actually did lock those funds. It can cost a lot of gas in order to actually interact with those smart contracts. There's also, you know, uh, a lot of opportunities for hacking these bridges. Let's talk about the XRP ledger. So how does it specifically bridge with other blockchains? And is that way unique? So there are some bridges. For example, Allbridge uh, recently added XRP support. So you can move funds between the XRP ledger and I believe the Binance Smart Chain. We at Ripple are also working on a production release of sidechains. And what sidechains are is you have the main network the main blockchain and sidechains are kind of a parallel network that the idea is they derive their value from the main chain. And so they're kind of like a layer 1.5 type of thing, like not quite a layer one, but because uh, not, but not also not quite a layer two because it does have its own validators and validation. So it's not depending on the main network to actually validate its transactions. And so what Ripple's doing is we're working on adding support for side chains to the XRP ledger. And that will allow people to essentially add custom functionality to the XRP ledger via side chains. 
They can write their own side chains that have whatever special features that they need or want and basically have their own blockchain to play around with. And they don't need to worry about needing to somehow make a bridge because that's already built into what we're doing. And we're also working on EVM based side chains, Ethereum virtual machine. And so that will allow people to basically use Solidity smart contracts, but still within the XRP ledger ecosystem. So you can, for example, you have all your XRP, you could transfer it over to this to this EVM side chain, interact with whatever smart contracts you want and, you know, leave it there for whatever period of time you want or move it back and continue to interact with the DEX or something like that. And then last but not least, you know, what interoperability and unifying protocol use cases get you personally most excited? At the moment, I'm pretty excited about bridges. I think that there's a lot of interesting things going on there. And I did a little bit of research of bridges in the crypto world a few weeks ago. And I was really interested by the fact that you have all of these different types of bridges. Some of them you have uh, an external node that essentially like signs in si signs an attestation saying that you know you lock the funds on the source chain in order to be able to unlock it on the other chain and some just forward the the block headers between the two chains and let the smart contracts that that are on either side of the bridge kind of do the proof themselves based on these these headers but all of these have some sort of external node that is doing the heavy lifting of proving the fact that you actually did lock the funds on the, the source chain when you're making a cross-chain transfer. So I'm really curious as to whether it's possible to, ha to have a truly trustless bridge or a bridge where you're really only trusting the blockchain itself and you don't have to trust any external nodes.